Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today um, last week I did a video on uh, trying to expand this awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5 from 8 drives to 16 drives and um, well that didn't work because I think we have a faulty cable and I complained to the eBay seller as well and he's gonna send me a new cable Yahoo it's gonna take forever uh, actually just before I started this video I thought I better remind him that he said that he would send that cable because nothing has turned up well nothing and nothing something has actually turned up but it's not the cable um, I ordered some trays for this uh, awesome Lenovo 8650 model 5 um, and they arrived I ordered 10 of them and I thought what the hell they cheated me but they actually did not they uh, they just optimized the packaging and put two trays in each box oh that's okay used trays um, or caddies even comes with screws awesome so we're gonna I'm gonna have trays for the two drives I have two drives here these they are Seagate Barracuda E Barracuda yeah I have to I have to pronounce that right otherwise I'll get punished in the comments and these are very stupid hard drives that have been taken out of USB boxes um, and we're gonna be putting them in the server these are SMR drives Schindle magnetic recording something um, it's their storage drives they're meant to have a lot of data they're not the fastest but at least they're not host managed this means that well you actually just send the data to the drive and it will manage where the data goes and that's fine um, that's one of the really good thing with IBM slash Lenovo servers you don't have to put in original IBM slash Lenovo hard drives in them they will work with everything else so will many of the other server brands but they might punish you in kind of a weird way because I have a Hewlett Packard down here and they're really well known for if you put in anything well let's say that you have a really awesome Samsung Pro drive here you want to put that in that would be cheap um, and great but well the Hewlett Packard server will see this drive and say I don't know you I don't know you you must use a lot of power because I don't know you so I'm gonna spin my, all of my fans full speed ahead captain um, just to make sure that this little drive is, don't overheat yeah in a, in a professional environment you wouldn't do that you wouldn't you wouldn't put in a Samsung drive not because they're bad but just because you don't do that in an enterprise environment you go with the models that the server Binger has approved and have on their positive list and all that good stuff but as soon as that server goes out of production and moves into the home lab oh you want to use these because they are bloody lot cheaper than the ones that uh, yeah often the companies don't give you the drives but you can have all the server then you have to go out and get the drives and yeah there is a price difference there so you want to put in something like that and then it's very nice that it doesn't spin all the fans 110 percent or whatever maybe it's not 110 but it's good and it's bad it's it's okay the server will keep cool and it's it's really meant to do that and i'm sure hewlett packard has thought well we have to make sure that this server is very cold but um yeah i don't know why it should spin up full speed because whatever drive you put in it's not as if it's going to be using three thousand percent more than than any other drive so well it doesn't have to so but the lenovo slash ibms don't do that so um i put in all kind of crap well they they take you the packet drives they also take really old crappy drives from a laptop Here's another one, Western Digital Blue, no problem, we'll take that. Take the SSDs, no problem. These are SATA, it will take SAS, and um, it will just be happy and smart. No, never mind, we were gonna... Um, I got a lot of good suggestions in that video about that um, expansion that I did, and I thought that it would be worth it to try some of it, because waiting for that cable, let's just um, try it out. Um, one of the good suggestions was to try and flip the cables uh, because right now that cable with the weird pins that are 
let's let's open up the server and see I, I put it in a longer cable so I should be able to to pull the server out here oh maybe yeah so we will be able to pull it out and still have power on it so that we can do some testing and I don't have to yeah do a lot of work I'm, nobody wants to do a lot of work so let's see okay. oh we have some lights blinking over here maybe it tells us some good stuff okay here on the back of the SAS expander slash backplane there are some light indicators lighting up. This blue one is very cool. Uh, I kind of, I'm a sucker for blue LEDs. Otherwise, we don't have much of an explanation about what these LEDs means. So that's kind of an issue. Also, we have something blinking green over here. So there is power to this one. Well, the first suggestion was to just flip the cables around and see if uh, if that will do the trick before we do that i do believe that uh, we want to <coughs> turn off power so uh, power off i'll take this cable out and put it over on the other end zero zero fk 819 and we have a zero zero fk 824 power cable i think one is longer than the other one that's probably about it so let's see if this shorter one is long enough okay got the cables in uh, that was easier said than done so we're gonna put some power back onto this there we have power here we have power there same thing blinks the same way I don't think there is any difference. There's usually some lights in these uh, hard drives over here being checked out and doing weird stuff. The system is initializing over here, but uh, I see nothing yet. Absolutely nothing good. So it doesn't look good. Okay, so um, it's still, well, they for sure don't just jump in. So. Um, we can power it off to try over or we can press C to, uh, to go into the configuration utility thingy. Hmm, doesn't like that. Huh? So that didn't do anything useful for me. Now I have taken uh, the cables directly from the rate controller and they're going over here to the first back plane. I've actually more or less just bypassed this SAS expander totally. So we're using the the new bad cable, the one that with the cut connection and this Model X connector on it over here to see if well if if they if they are powered okay. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna try and swap the cables around and see if if we lost everything or what the heck is going on. So, uh, yeah, we are booting right now. We do actually have some hard disk activity over here now. And then it disappeared. The camera is too slow. There we are. Something is happening. So apparently power is good, but something else is bad. Okay, that, that worked. So um, yeah, we, we, we do have something running here. Storage. We have, we have the LSI controller back in the server. And then we have this one, which is the one that we're missing with right now. And main menu, can we see some drives? Drive management, yeah, it sees my drives. Five, four terabytes and I have two, 300 gigabytes. Yeah, this works. So it's pretty clear that this power cable, even though someone cut it up and put this connector on it, well, it does supply power to the unit over here. Uh, so the fault is over here at the SAS controller. Another good suggestion in the comments was that the firmware on this was too old. And so I think we should go and try and update the firmware of this server. So at the computer I've been starting to prepare that. So anytime you get a new Lenovo server or IBM server, the first thing you do is well, you power it up, see if it works. If it works well enough, well, before you start installing all kind of good stuff, you firmware update it. 
because if you buy a server they just took it out of production and it might not have been firmware updated since they put it in perfectly normal shouldn't mess with a system that is working fine but when you have them between working like um, it's brand new to you and you want to get this up and running well it's a perfect time to firmware update it fully and what you do is that you type in google and you search for lenovo and b-o-m-c it stands for bootable media creator and lenovo is continuing updating this uh, something that ibm started type in lenovo b-o-m-c uh, you get this result and uh, i actually have my own video down here that is kind of funny but the first one lenovo x clarity essential bootable media if we click that we get we get to here documentation and it tells us that this is 11.6.0 is the newest one and they have just updated it with the new amd based think system servers so that's the sr635 655 that's the amd servers and then there is this new edge server down here at do believe that that is intel based uh, se350 but down here we have the x clarity software we have the newest one and we have the previous one we are of course going to go for the newest one so if you click that one you get to over here where they want uh, my opinion um, i think you're awesome but um please go away i have downloaded the newest one that one and it's 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 down there so moving on I um, put that in a library and can see that last time I was messing with this we were on version 11.3 and that was about a year ago so might be a good time to do this again. This is what the program looks like and the whole idea is that you put in a USB stick in your computer or you make an ISO file if you want to do this remotely if you have the remote management options to your server well you can do this remotely and just update the server from your workstation so uh, we could give it a name <laughs> i'm not gonna bother let's just continue next then we need to pick a family that we want a target system storage platform lenovo platform and ibm platform so it, it's pretty cool that they still have all the ibms down here that's, that's very cool of them Thank you. Um, let's see, I should be able to find my awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5 somewhere here. There it is. It's that one, but it's also not that one because mine is the that one. They're almost the same server, but um, this one is the one that is able to handle the version four of the Intel CPUs and the other one was able to handle num version 3 so i'm gonna pick both of them the most of it is gonna be very similar so uh, it's not gonna be a lot that i have to get so that's the system that we want to make this bootable media for so next here we can pick if we we want the updates and we can enable auto run yeah let's just do that next here we can pick if we want the newest drivers or if we want some uh some service packs that has been approved and checked out and this works together and stuff let's play it safe and just get that one that one doesn't matter this one is okay here we can pick what we want to do if we want to make a bootable iso file but we can also pick usb there and e drive i have to check if that's if that's correct i have a four gigabyte and it has some Samsung migration, so it's the D drive. So the good thing that I checked. So D, we're gonna be writing directly to device. Yes, it can also do an image file. Bootable USB it is. Next, this is fine. Next, we get these two servers. They are both the Lenovo X3650 Model 5, both models. Next, it's gonna go out to Lenovo's uh, site and it's gonna check all the updates that are available for these servers and, uh, and make a nice bootable USB stick for us and see it found 22 updates here it's gonna find similar numbers for the other ones I'm sure two updates for the other model as well it did not go and download the upgrades again or updates uh, so they are the same for the two models 
done with that and it asks our permission to actually delete that USB thingy and yes that's perfectly fine so now it's gonna be writing to the USB and I see it blinking down here blinking in there so making bootable USB okay that did actually take a while to complete uh, it says that we should eject the drives D so uh, we're gonna do that down here eject there and it stopped lighting up down here so we can remove it and go boot our server so right now it's only this backplane over here that is connected and if I want to update the firmware on this SAS expander slash backplane well I need to connect it otherwise I'm not gonna it's not gonna do anything good for me so uh, I'll uh, rewire this back to where it's not working and then put this in okay this was teasing me quite a bit uh, the server wouldn't let me through uh, because it wouldn't find the disks and well I was pressing all the wrong buttons over here so well now we have gotten to that I can boot from the USB storage so let's try that this is the screen that is uh, irritating me right so it says that we do all of this and you should press Y to to acknowledge that all your drives are gone if you press capital Y nothing happens if you press capital C nothing happens if you press enter nothing happens if you press escape this comes again and um, so weird as hell right so right now this is marked so we actually have to point arrow down and then we get a field where we can press enter and now we can put in something that's not very cool Sorry, we can save and exit. We're just gonna press no. We don't need to save anything there. And now we it will boot again. Um, it didn't boot. Well, we went into the utility, but now it will boot from the USB. Uh, I'm hoping. Oh, yeah, we said that it could start automatically, so uh, it does. So this is a new screen. I haven't seen that before. So loading the awesome Linux thingy that controls this. Yeah. Let's see if this works at all before I call it too awesome. I, through the time, I've had very many issues with BOMC. Some of the problems has, of course, been my own fault. Uh, not deleting the old version on my computer before installing a new version on top of it. That teased me a long time. I couldn't figure anything out and it just did not want to work. And then I finally deleted everything and started over and everything worked then another thing I did was uh, well uh, making these USB sticks here I started out by making an ISO file and then I, I, I did a well I used that ISO file to make a bootable USB that didn't work so finally I found out that I could just use the USB function in the BOMC software and that worked instead it has been a fight we are in the bootable Linux thing and it's um, comparing updates so it's checking out the server and comparing the, the firmware and stuff on the server with the firmware that we have downloaded for a that's gonna be exciting this can take a while I'm sure it um, it found all the software that it's gonna do anything about I do believe that we get an overview there's a lot of stuff here that it, it's not detecting but um, on this BOMC there is like firmware for all the approved Lenovo parts it could be a QLogic fiber channel or HBA or a Mellanox firmware or yeah press OK mm. and that would have been nice if they didn't put that in so now it's gonna tell us which updates it's actually putting on I'm sure I am not seeing anything that should be that backplane so yeah, eh, eh. it completed those three upgrades so let's continue and finish and it will reboot are you sure you want to exit I'm pretty sure that I want to exit go exit so um, I'm gonna run it once more and see if it comes up with anything else um, booted it again actually this is the third time but uh, yeah it doesn't seem like there's nothing let's pick something let's let's try this one this would be some hard drive something just let it update that it's undetected so it might be might do something it didn't find any hard drives to update so it failed so eh. 
Okay, we're in the well buyers and we are in the storage manager. And if we go in here to the main menu and we go down to drive management, it will tell us that it doesn't see any drives whatsoever. That's pretty unfortunately. Uh, if we go back and see here, zero enclosures, zero backplanes. Yeah, that's that's not what we were expecting. I kind of put the new discs here in the in the new trays. Well, the old discs in the new trays. So let's try and put those in the back plane over here. Just put those in in the in the new back plane. See if 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 they will pop up in any way, shape or form. Surely doesn't look like it. They usually light up somewhat and indicate that they are there. Yeah, I think we are fighting a losing battle here. Still nothing. I just had a couple of drives out. Try and listen if they don't spin up at all. Eh, something's wrong with that back plane. Okay, uh, this is bad. Uh, I took it out because it just should work. So I examined it and everything looks just great. Except I found something here that wasn't straight. So I found the, uh, uh, well, you know, looking thinky that uh, old man used. <coughs> so let's, but the camera has really good zoom. So let's go closer. We can kind of see that there is a something looks like some kind of it could be a resistor that is yeah you can kind of see it right there in the middle uh, that little chip there is, is all broken and stuff and just next to it there's a couple of resistors ah <sighs> i might be able to fix this i don't want to uh, so i'll 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 go take a very good picture of this and send to the seller and I'll explain that. Well, it might be a better idea if you sent me a new one. Let's see um, how we very diplomatically does that. That's gonna be exciting. I uh, just found that my phone did a really decent job at, at actually taking a photo of that damage. So uh, yeah, just wanted to share that. So that's bloody unfortunate. It's broken. Yeah, I could firmware update software from here and to the end of the world. That would probably not align that chip that has broken off and the missing resistor and the one that has broken its path down there. So, yeah, I have some diplomatic uh, eBay um, communication to do. Um, the best thing I found is not to attack the seller for uh, sending some crap. The best thing is to start a dialogue and tell him that I'm afraid that the unit you sent uh, found that it is broken. and. Uh, the, you have to make sure that both parts can go out of the negotiations error correcting with uh, their honor intact because if you just especially Chinese sales people well if you start complaining they will shut you down they will just uh, reply not happening anymore any other country you can you can be really rude and they will try and give you a good service um, Chinese sellers you kind of have to be way more diplomatic and uh, they get a win-win situation even though both are losing so yeah this sucks but um we found the error so um so please remember to give this video a like down there these likes thinkies well they they kind of workish thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye